Hello, my dear saints. Are you guys ready to go home? I know I am. But until then, we have a job to do. We've got lots of seeds to plant, folks, because there's at least 7 billion people walking around on this planet that aren't saved yet. Did you know that over 150,000 people a day, each day, die? That's a lot of souls, folks. And, you know, it's a good guess that the majority of them never knew Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord, nor have they even heard the true gospel of salvation. You know, it's our job, saints, to, to go out and to make sure the people around us know the gospel. Plant the seeds. It's that simple. Just plant the seed and move on to the next person. You know, it, if the seed you plant suddenly takes root and that person comes back to you wanting to know more, then by all means, tell them more. But if that seed ends up being a dud, watering it over and over and over again won't fix it. So move on and plant another seed somewhere else. You know, we're farmers, saints. We, we plant seeds of salvation. Keep it simple. Okay, today we're going to look at the third dispensation called human government. In the last video, we saw the second dispensation called conscience. And before that one, we saw the dispensation of innocence. So, what is the dispensation of human government? Great question. Now, first, let's answer the question. What exactly is a dispensation now the simple answer a dispensation is a system it's used to describe how God interacts with people during different periods of time throughout history so Paul uses the word dispensation four times in his book so it pays off to know what the word means and how it applies to God's word now we know that there are seven dispensations from creation to the end of the 1000 year millennial reign of Christ Jesus okay so moving along if you remember in the last video I mentioned that each dispensation contains six parts we have the managers time period responsibility failure judgment and grace so in the dispensation of the human government we see that the managers here are Noah and his descendants the time period we're talking about, the flood, to the confusion of the languages at the Tower of Babel, that's about 429 years. And the responsibility was for them to scatter and multiply. Okay, we see that in Genesis 9. And their failure is the unwillingness to scatter and multiply. Well, they did multiply, but they didn't scatter. Instead, they, they built the Tower of Babylon and stayed in one spot. And the judgment for that was confusion of their languages and the grace that God poured out even though they didn't listen to him was Abraham is chosen uh, the start of the Jewish race begins through whom our Messiah would come now at the end of the second dispensation of conscience the last one we looked at came the flood God saves uh, you know Noah and his family and out of his grace and love for them he saves them and he makes a covenant with Noah to never destroy the earth by flood again and that's where we get our rainbow today then God institutes the third dispensation today's dispensation or not today's but the study that we're having today is the human government a way for mankind to battle evil and we're looking at a time period from Noah to Abraham and that's from 2350 BC to just about 2000 BC God gave Noah a set of rules to enforce we see an example here at Genesis 9 6 whoso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed for in the image of God made he man this one command establishes the sanctity of human life and the authority of man to govern man and this authority continues if we look at Romans 13 let every soul be subject unto the higher powers for there is no power but of God 
The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same, for he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs uh, be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. However, man's sinful nature abounds still and continues to grow even during Noah's time. Noah's descendants refused to follow God's provisions. They created their own gods in the form of idols and then they fell into moral decay. Now people relied on themselves instead and they even blasphemed the one and only God by creating for themselves their own gods made from stone and wood and clay etc. Then all, all of this eventually ends up with the building of the Tower of Babylon, the ultimate blasphemy. Look here with me at Genesis 11, 1 through 4. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass that they journeyed from the east. What they found, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly and they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar and they said go to let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth so when god saw what they were doing seeing their blatant disobedience god decides to confuse their languages creating many different languages among the people there so they wouldn't understand each other and this caused them naturally to gather in groups okay groups of their own languages and then this caused them to move to other locations you see God took control and forced them to follow his command of go forth and repopulate the earth and so on we see this command in Genesis 9 verse 1 and God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth so now what about grace what grace was given to them at this point by God God demonstrates his grace by choosing Abraham and his descendants to be those whom our Lord Jesus would come the ultimate Redeemer of mankind the seed of the woman who bruised the head of the serpent as promised earlier in Genesis 12 verses 1 and 3 now the Lord had said unto Abram get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed so saints this is our basic overview of the dispensation called human government next time we'll be looking at the fourth dispensation called promise and here's where it starts to get very interesting so thanks for studying with me folks and i'll see you on the next video